This is Justin Case of American Newscape, joining our friend and comedic siren, Karen Mills, bringing you some good old-fashioned American humor. Hello, Karen. Welcome to American Newscape. Hey, Justin. How you doing? We're doing good. Despite some audio glitches, we're going to get through this thing. All right. <laughs> comedic siren. Who knew? Who knew you were a comedic siren? Who knew? <laughs> 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 that's right ladies and gentlemen she will lure you to your death with her comedic humor no no okay <laughs> all right yeah karen, <laughs> karen thanks for joining us our audience will absolutely love you you're a clean comedian you're acclaimed you've been doing this for a long time so karen what's happening hey just coming out of this pandemic and uh and loving every minute of it i you know, although I am having a little anxiety because I, during the pandemic, I was sitting and worrying about how long this is going to go on and when it'd be over. And now that it's basically over and we're back at it again, uh, now I'm just kind of uh, fretting over all that I didn't get accomplished during oh. that year when I had time to do it. I don't, you know, I, one thing I've noticed that, you know, we all reached for something during this mess. And I found the comedians that they were therapy. And so many of you reached out and made yourselves available. And there was so much of your material online there that it was indeed therapeutic. So, you know, kudos to all of you. And, and it's so true. I mean, uh, I, so many of my fellow uh, comedians, uh, we all tried to stay engaged online and do the best we could to make things light and to keep people entertained and and i hope that i contributed a little bit to that i certainly uh, was my intention well you know when i do the research for these i get to watch you and i get to watch some of your videos and i chuckled through it i mean it was it was therapeutic you know we're very similar in ages and uh simply loved it you know you, oh thank you you know my favorite joke which i shared was your pms and your <laughs> menopause <laughs> the difference in <laughs> the difference. <laughs> yes, that tells me that you have a wife that you've dealt with uh, <laughs> through menopause. That's, that's it. <laughs> well, that that would be quasi accurate, but I think she laughed harder at it than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it always kills, and it kills both genders. I mean, the men and women alike. Just uh, that that's a that's a go to joke if I to close out a set because it's uh, it always kills so you know and it's so true you know there's there's a beauty of comedians such as yourself you're very professional you can we can put you in front of any audience you can you can uh, get up and motivate a corporation you've done past work like that i can take my grandmother and my grandchild to see you because i don't think anybody is going to be overly offended at what you do and and see that there's a beauty to that you know, it's a be there's a beauty to family sharing humor. Uh, it really is, and it's and it's made quite a comeback. Uh, and dry bar comedy had a lot to do with that because so many people, and this has always annoyed me so much, but so many people equate clean with hokey or not funny or um, and. And that's just simply not true. I mean, you can be just as funny or funnier and open it up to a whole new, um, to an extended audience, like you say, your, your grandmother and your grandchild. And I don't feel like I sacrifice funny to be clean. No, absolutely not. You are, well, I don't want to say you're hilarious. And I, I, don't, I don't imagine that when you walk through the grocery store, people punt, point and go, look at the funny lady. But, but but you're so no. relatable you're so real and you're so <laughs> relatable and you've been you've done so much i mean that's why i'm thrilled to interview you not only do i find you funny but i find you extremely professional and uh it's just and my audience has to endure me gushing but you you certainly deserve it karen oh well thank you so much and um you know i a few years ago i made my debut on the grand Ole opry 
and being a Tennessee girl, that was uh, that was a big deal uh, for my family, particularly. And I was really honored to to be asked to do that. And the way that came about was Jamie Daly, who's a, a Grammy award winning bluegrass part of the bluegrass duo. He hit me up on Instagram one night and said, are you on Sirius XM and love your comedy and would like to have you on my segment of the Grand Ole Opry. And it, it was just such a um, metaphor for life for me because one day you're just going about your business, another just another day like the one before, and then the next day someone reaches out and you're on the Grand Ole Opry. And I've been on five times since then. And um, I just so appreciate all the different avenues that comedy has now with with everything online, all the different social media, the Sirius XM, Drive Bar Comedy. I mean, there's so many more ways to reach people. And, um, and, and I have had many opportunities in my career and, and hopefully they'll keep coming. But um, that's another a test to clean comedy because if you're a blue comic and I'm not here to judge anybody, anybody can do whatever they want to do. But if you're a blue comic, you're limited to the clubs. So you better be a Chris Rock or somebody like that because all you can do is work comedy clubs where if you're a clean comedian, you, you work theaters, you work, uh, uh, Grand Ole Opry, you work, uh, uh, cruises, you work corporate conferences, you know, it, it just expands you so much. You know who, uh, my first, I think, sincere exposure to that was Jeannie Robertson. I mean, I we still watch her. I, I watch her bits 10 years past the fact. And right before the COVID was happening, we were going to interview her. Of course, things slowed down and she took back off. But what, what I learned to appreciate is the genius in that delivery. And when I watch her with that timing and all you great comedians, you have that that mastery of timing and and i've gotten to be such a comedic fan these days that i watch that timing and it's it that's an art into itself but well, judy is great she's a good friend of mine and uh she is um and she's still i mean at whatever age she's at she still has such work ethic i mean she's always writing and working on um uh, new stories and and just getting that you know there's such a craft to getting the right wording for something to be funny i mean the wrong phrase can kill the whole story i mean it really makes a huge difference and if you're good at it you tell it in a way that seems effortless but a lot of work went into it and she's a master i love Jean. when you when you were trying new material i assume you know now we can tape it and you can review it are you are you a Mark. fair critique of your own work? I hate everything I do. So oh. <laughs> it is. It's, I can always think I could have done better. It's not that I don't think it's ever any good. I just always think, oh, that could have been better. I could have, you know, but that's how you get better is by uh, taping yourself or used to. It was just a. Uh, audio and uh that i've record uh, a set on and then just listen back but uh now with the iphones and being able to take camera with you everywhere you go i i do a lot of video and then um and, and with new material it's it's really just as simple as just saying it and and letting it bomb one time and then i know how to fix it <laughs> but i always <laughs> i always dread knowing that oh i'm sure this isn't gonna work yet but uh I, but once i put it out there i can see what it needs and you would think I, after this many years i'd be able to see what it needs before i ever put it on stage but if, there's still something about just having that audience reaction sometimes i get a reaction where i didn't expect one and sometimes i don't get one where i did and then sometimes in the moment you throw out a line that you didn't even think of and if you don't record it at my it's age <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten it by the time i get to the green room so um so it really helps to to have that recording well yeah i understand because you know during this taping i will not uh, it, a lot of it will be lost on me till i review it and then I'll actually have a moment where I'll say, hey, that was, I, I actually did good that one moment in time. So 
<laughs> that one moment. Yeah, that's oh. that's kind of how I could do things. Yeah, I had one moment that wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, let's celebrate. <laughs> let's celebrate that moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly but, right. You know, that's why comedy and delivery of comedy is such an art. I mean, it, it's ever evolving. Your audiences are always different. The audiences are evolving. And you've been able to keep up on that as long as you've been doing it. And, and, and a lot of, the, a well, lot of I've your had comedy, had show. See, Go ahead. see the precision of this, ladies and gentlemen, the timing and <laughs> you know, the cues, the cue cards are being dropped. But there's, there's uh, and you've been doing it long enough that you have jokes that will stand the test of time. I do, and sometimes I hang on to them till the end of time, and you need to let go no, of no. certain things on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do this bit on the movie Nail. That was the uh, Jodie Foster movie. And it, that was 19, what, 94 that movie came out, but it has kind of become a cult classic. And um, I have been... I thought, I'm going to let that go. That's old. I don't need to do that anymore, even though it killed and it was a closer. And so it was really hard for me to let go of it. Well, then I let it go. I, I, I don't do it anymore. And then I am accosted in the Birmingham parking lot, a uh, parking lot of the Stardome saying, I brought 15 people with me to see you do nail and you didn't do it. <laughs> so it's always this like, so I'm standing in the parking lot of the Stardome doing the bit for those 15 people because I didn't want them to be disappointed that I didn't do it. But it, it it's always this juggle between new material and old material. Well, I, I just try to keep it mixed up as best I can. And Well, and that stuff is pretty damn good. And I'll tell you what, everybody, let's run a clip of some of Karen's comedy. And we'll be right back afterwards. Before you get too excited, I just want to let you know that I'm not Ellen. I hear it all the time. I'm the Southern Ellen. I look like Ellen, talk like Reba. Or my personal favorite, I'm like if Ellen and Dolly had a baby. A few years ago, I auditioned for America's Got Talent. And when I walked out on stage, the first thing Simon said to me is, who do people tell you you look like? And I said, J-Lo. <laughs> I was reading the other day that the only two species on planet Earth to go through menopause are female humans and killer whales. And I'm guessing they weren't killer whales until after they went through it. I'm sure they were fun, outgoing whales <laughs> with full lips and a good metabolism. Face <laughs> squirrel. The last one I rescued was a little chihuahua. She was abandoned on the street. She walked over to me, looked at me with those big eyes and said, can you take me in? I'm homeless. I'm pregnant. Hey, I've made some mistakes. <laughs> but she had two of the cutest puppies I've ever seen. But she has had a terrible time losing the baby weight. So, so I put her on a diet, but she is such a typical female. Every time I go to weigh her, she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Take this collar off. <laughs> She has to fake her death or get liquored up. <laughs> but now you have to be careful what you say in front of Alexa, because she is a cyber spy and they're everywhere. They know everything you buy, everything you search for, everything you click on. I went to weather.com, J. Crew popped up. All I wanted was the temperature, bought this blazer. But cancer really has taught me so much, like never order a wig on the internet. <laughs> I ordered the Jamie Lee Curtis Pixie, 
And what they sent me made me look like Joe Pesci from My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> and I see other cancer patients tie a scarf around their head and look like a fashion model. When I did it, people asked me to read their palms. <laughs> wow. Wow. A cross between Reba and Dolly Parton. Who knew? <laughs> Yeah, Ellen and Dolly, or Ellen and Reba. Reba and Ellen and Dolly, all, you're a combination of all three. Yeah, yeah, right. No, no, that, that's a classic, and we'll provide a direct link to Karen's website and this video. Um, but I just, I just, <laughs> I, I enjoy it too much, and it, it is therapy. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. <laughs> now, you are a pet lover, and there's a pet running around there because he reacted to my voice before we, or she reacted to my voice before we were on camera. So is that the Chihuahua? I have uh, the Chihuahua and a Terrier both sleeping right beside me. Well, they have to keep an eye on you. <laughs> oh, they have to be wherever I am. So cute. <laughs> so sweet. Okay, well... <laughs> Well, Karen, there's some upcoming dates. You want to plug a couple of them before we share them with everybody? Uh, yes. Um, I have uh, Zanies in Nashville on August 1st. Uh, Zanies is a fantastic club. Love Zanies. Um, that will be, I said that's Nashville, right? Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, August 22nd, Stand Up Live in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, September 10th and 11th, I'm at the Comedy Catch in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, I'm also doing uh, a benefit in Cleveland, Tennessee, which is my hometown, uh, July 29th is for the Caring Place. And it, um, they did so much for the community during the pandemic and helping people uh, make sure they had food and all their needs met. So um, I'm partnering with them to try to bring some uh, laughs to the community and some appreciation for that. I can't imagine what came first, Cleveland, Ohio or Cleveland, Tennessee? Oh, Tennessee, I'm sure. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There's a Cleveland in every state. You know? Well, everybody, you know, this has been a, a, a wonderful gift that uh, Karen has shared with us. You know, when she plays, there's VIP rooms where you get to go in and interact with Karen and learn more about Karen. And that's exactly what we're doing here, except she's saving us the VIP fee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So you, you sign autographs and programs for people in the VIP room. What else? You know, most of us will never be in a VIP room. What other secret super stuff goes on there? Well, you know, now people want uh, selfies more than they are, you know, or pictures more than they want uh, being signed. But I'm happy to do whatever and to, um, and I love visiting with, uh, with people and, and just, I mean, it, it, gives me energy. I also get a lot of new material from people that come up and tell me stories and things that happen to them. And um, so I, I just love the interaction. Well, and, and I have to believe that your dad's dachshund story is actually that happened because I, oh, you, you, it all happened. you couldn't make it up. <laughs> no, that happened. I assure you that happened. <laughs> And my dad, you know, he, he was he was so funny about that dog. I mean, he taught baby talk to that dog all the time, but no one else. And everybody laughed at him, but he didn't care. <laughs> oh no, no, and we're all we're all nuts when it comes to a dog. So um, you know, I come by it honest. Well, you know, and I think that's what all of us as human beings have in common. We're all nuts. Just a few of us are in touch with it. <laughs> Yeah, most of us know it, and that makes us not know it. <laughs> well, gives us, a, of it. <laughs> gives us a leg up or something. Okay, yes, Karen, exactly. Karen, before we get out of here, I, I would love to have you on air promise to come back because we thoroughly enjoy you and we need more, Karen. I absolutely will come back. I would love to. And, um, and you know, I also would want to share more of um, my cancer story because um, I know so many people are touched by cancer and um, next time we'll talk about that some because um, it's so important when you're going through anything 
uh, any type of adversity to find humor. And so I, I do a lot of um, speaking uh, now that I went through it in 2013, I was diagnosed. And so because I would tell my story with humor, I started being asked to do keynotes and commencement addresses and all kinds of things. And then I also grew up playing basketball. So I have lots to oh, talk about. That's so. right. Now, let's not let you sneak off. Uh, you were a college basketball player and you were a stud S, so to speak. You were a very acclaimed basketball player. And how tall were you when you played basketball, Karen? Well, I was 5'2 and I played. Now I'm 5'1". <laughs> <laughs> I've been shrinking. Uh, no, I was 5'2", point guard. Yeah. You dished with the best Back of them. Back in the 1800s, I played. I do what? You dished with the best of them. Now, were you a fan of Pete Maravich back in the day? I was. I was a big fan of fan of Pistol Pete's. See how we date ourselves? <laughs> I know. I know. That does date me, doesn't it? <laughs> But let's let's plan on that. Let's plan on do, just doing an interview with regard to uh, your cancer journey and uh, some of the things that I've experienced, and I think it would be very very powerful. And uh, okay, okay, I'm excited about that. Okay, now everybody, before I get out of here, I'm going to run the credits, which are going to show where Karen's playing. And um, remember, you can go to her website and get all this cool information, and you can get in touch with her, and you can book her for your corporate. You can book her for your your club and if you haven't had her in your club now i'm suspect you know how funny is your club really but that's just me <laughs> that's just me okay this has been justin case and karen mills helping to find life with a comedic approach thanks for joining us remember additional information and links provided in this videos read more including upcoming show dates today's the day to subscribe to this channel and please support comedians and cancer survivors everywhere